<coughs> Hello. Please take your seats. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you all have had great FICA. And now it's time to kick off the office session. My name is Magda Schubert. Uh, I'm a global concept developer for offices at Ecophone. And I feel truly privileged to be a host of that session with four presentations from acoustic experts. Today we will focus on proofs and tools meaning the latest acoustic standards for offices. And talking about proofs, our first speaker is a research team leader at Turku University of Applied Sciences. And today he will walk us through his research on the impact of office noise on stress hormones in blood plasma. Sounds interesting? Please welcome Valtteri Hongisto. <laughs> Thank you for the chairman. Uh, it's an honor to be invited here and uh, a little bit excited, but uh, that's part of the business. Oh, okay. So, uh, a little bit about myself. So, uh, I'm from Turku University of Applied Sciences, and we have a research group where we focus on uh, acoustics and noise and air quality, thermal comfort. And then we have, have uh, 14 people there and uh, we have three different laboratories for, for building acoustics testing and then we have psychophysics laboratory and ventilation laboratory. And now I focus on, on these red topics. I talk about psychophysiology, applied research and we have uh, many kinds of scientists, scientists involved and we study humans and, and uh, subjective, cognitive and physiological effects. Uh, first I begin with the uh, rationale, why this noise is important. Uh, we had an opportunity, opportunity to uh, get the data of Lesman Corporation uh, one year before the corona pandemic and we could analyze how the indoor environment is perceived globally. And we had uh, 85,000 respondents in that study from 68 countries. And uh, it proved that noise is among the largest uh, sources of environmental dissatisfaction uh, together with thermal conditions. But what is uh, interesting here is that we also got uh, data about the type of office. And we can see here Ah. Here, the bars in private offices, proportion of dissatisfied is only 15, but when you go to open plan and flex offices, the number increases. So noise is uh, depending on kind of the office we work. Uh, <coughs> so uh, one important driver to this study was that uh, there is a lot of evidence that cognitive performance uh, reduces in the office if we have a larger speech transmission index. Uh, and we uh, had this uh, review a couple of years ago where we collected data from uh, different countries who experimented this question. And we have the data points of these uh, experiments here and we can see quite good fit that uh, we can see that the performance reduces on average 16% when the STI is larger than 0.5. And therefore, the uh, work performance is really a question in open plan offices where we are always 
exposed speech. But why this study? Uh, we have been doing uh, experiments about uh, cognitive effects of uh, office noise quite a lot, and there are many studies globally done on that. Uh, because it requires quite a reasonable effort, money, I'm talking about money and number of personnel that you need in the experiment. But uh, there is a lot of pressure to do research like this where we study the physiological effects. Uh, because uh, we know that stress uh, is a risk factor for uh, morbidity. So cardiovascular diseases are more probable if you are always in the stress condition. And there are quite few studies about office noise and stress effects. I have listed one of some of those there, and they give quite inconsistent picture about the effects. And uh, one reason is that uh, they have different methodologies and, and so on. And actually, there was no previous study which has investigated the effects of office noise on, on the stress hormone uh, concentrations in the body using the most precise and most uh, real-time method, which is blood sampling. And I have a photograph of, of that on the right. So it means that we take the um, uh, blood fr from the arm to the ampules and uh, collect the, um, anal do the analysis afterwards. So, uh, stress is very much driven by emotions. If we are in a workplace where it's silent, we uh, get satisfaction because we can concentrate and focus very well. But when we have this uh, situation that we have the noise there, it influences uh, our performance, it gives us annoyance, and uh, therefore, because we are dissatisfied with our own outcome, in the work. Uh, that causes the stress because we are late from the timetables. And uh, there is a positive stress and negative stress. Positive uh, stress can be sometimes good because it gives us some boost. But if you are continuously under stress condition, that is the risk factor for cardiovascular diseases. There is a lot of epidemiological evidence on that. So the purpose of our study was to investigate how unnecessary speech, so it means speech that has nothing to do with your current task, uh, how that kind of speech affects human in a holistic level uh, while we are working, office kind of work. And we studied ex exceptionally broad range of human outcomes uh, because we collected data from questionnaires, so psychological effects, uh, from uh, task performance, so uh, cognitive effects and this uh, uh, stress effects from the body. And uh, it was a good idea in the beginning to do that, but then I, then I understood that it requires a tremendous effort. And actually, I list here the names of our research group. So we had 16 people involved with the experimental work and of course uh, 100 participants on top of that. So so it was a really big study, and uh, we had this uh, professor Mika Shainin from Turku University who was uh, uh, supporting us in medical questions, and uh, he arranged all this uh, blood plasma uh, analysis and, and such things. And we had six students who took the uh, samples from the body. Uh, so we had this medical laboratory experiment, and we had the approval from the ethics board of, of university hospital. It was quite a big process also. And the dependent variables were the above mentioned human outcomes. Uh, and uh, the independent variable was the sound condition. And we had two sounding conditions in this study, what I've talked about now. They were speech, 65 dB, and silence, uh, 35 dB. And uh, the speech was uh, just a normal radio dialogue. It's, it was an interview, and the topic was about children's uh, summer camps. So it was not very interesting or not, not very attractive. Uh, but it, it, it had some kind of plot, of plot to follow. And actually, the experiment contained also three other sound conditions, but I will not talk about them today. 
but I mentioned that we had uh, 20 participants in uh, speech, silence, and impulsive noise, and tonal noise, and steady state no uh, noise. So we had much more than these two in the end. And the laboratory looked like this, that we had always uh, two participants at the time in the room. And uh, here we have these uh, devices around the room that we needed for storing the blood samples. Actually, we collected uh, 1,200 uh, ampules during this experiment. <laughs> so that was a logis logistic question also. The sounds, you are acousticians, so I will tell you about that. But one slide, so uh, speech was uh, having the normal ISO standard spectrum from 100 to uh, 10,000 hertz. And the, the silence condition had the same shape, so they didn't uh, differ in spectral shape, but the, but the level uh, was uh, 30 dB higher in speech. And uh, here is uh, some uh, temporal picture, so the, background, uh, the silence is 35, smooth, but the speech is, of course, varying with time, so it's it's impulsive, actually. And uh, you can see the vari variability of sound level in speech. It is high. Uh, some photos of the laboratory. Uh, so we need this storage for blood amples, and uh, then we move them to another freezer for several months for the analysis. And then we had these uh, centrifuges uh, there. Um, by the way, do you need some old centrifuges? They are now <laughs> not used anymore. <laughs> uh, and also uh, some backup uh, if someone faints. And uh, I have one good jo joke here. I was the first person to test it, and um, I was a pilot person. We had this general uh, experiment before the experiment started, and I went there, and they tried to push the canoe, and I fainted. <laughs> that was, that's the reason why we have these backup spaces there, that if someone faints, <laughs> then we have that uh, some kind of first aid place and some sugar also. But only two people fainted after me. Okay, this uh, shows the experimental room, so the dependent variables once more. Uh, annoyance workload in questionnaires, and then uh, we measured stress with many ways, heart rate variability, heart rate, blood pressure, and cortisol and adrenaline um, concentrations. And we measured three different psychological tasks, NVAC, visual re serial recall, and auditory serial recall. Uh, and the procedure was that uh, we had um, the duration of the whole experiment, it was three hours, so quite long. And uh, uh, it was always beginning at the same time, because there is a strong diurnal variation in cortisol concentration in the blood, so we had to wait that people get more stable in a way. Uh, and uh, then first is restoration, uh, where we, uh, people get calm, calm in the place and they are not so excited, and we put the catheter in the arm, so that after that they are excited and the cortisol level is high. So we had to wait quite long before we start to take the blood samples, and we took them six times uh, in red lines, and then we did uh, the questionnaires uh, eight times. And uh, we had this uh, baseline phase first, which is uh, silence, and uh, we made all these uh, psychological tests, so they were working all the time. And then we had this experimental phase. And 20 people were uh, having this speech in this condition, and 20 people had the silence. So they had actually the same condition in both, condition, uh, both uh, phases of the experiment. Now I go to the results. Uh, first is the psychological part. So the questioners, uh, they are not uh, showing anything new. Uh, people were highly annoyed so this uh, uh, difference means that we compare uh, the um, rating uh, to the baseline. So the baseline was first, and then you have the uh, condition, which is peace or silence. And in silence, of course, nothing changes, though the an annoyance uh, remains uh, at zero level, the difference, but in speech, uh, high increment on a, a range of uh, from zero to 10. And workload was also 
significantly higher in speech. Then uh, performance, uh, we uh, had these three tasks and we have found effect in two uh, tasks out of three. I don't talk about uh, results, uh, zero results, I only pick the cherries here. <laughs> So uh, uh, we found that the silence, in silence, the percentage of correct answers in three back tasks, which means that you have to remember three numbers back, it, is, it was uh, much higher performance than in speech. And also in, in, uh, in this uh, auditory serial recall task, uh, we had this strong effect. Uh, and now the stress. Cortisol concentration in blood plasma was higher in speech uh, uh, than in silence. So this is uh, taken from the, the blood plasma. And the, the difference is significant. It's not very, very significant, but anyway, with 20 people in the experiment, that shows that there is an effect. And also we found in NBAC task, we measured the heart rate variability, and we, we found out that the uh, when they did the end back task first and then the second end back task, uh, it was done twice. We found that the heart rate variability had significant uh, change, so that the heart rate variability reduced, which means higher stress. So, conclusions unnecessary speech caused these uh, adverse effects in many levels, uh, as you saw. And we found them already after 50 minutes exposure. So it's very probable that in the office where we work much longer, it's very probable that there is the risk that people get stressed also. But we cannot prove that. It was an experiment in laboratory. But uh, in practice, uh, we hope that these results benefit you and, and uh, all kinds of people in this field who are trying to explain people why to invest on noise control. It's quite evident that we should pay care to uh, open plan offices and acoustic design there. Uh, and you know how to do that. Okay, uh, this has been published a couple of years ago during Corona pandemia. It was not very fashionable at that time, but uh, now it is again. Uh, so we have a lot of publications and, and uh, thanks to funders and thank you.